All right, welcome back. So today I've got a video on doing a brake job on a CAT 740. Uh, this is a late serial number, a B1P. Uh, it's built around 2011. Uh, so it was, the, the symptoms it had is when you'd hit the brakes, the alarm would come on after just a couple seconds saying that you had low brake pressure. So we went through and we checked the pump. The pump's fine. We checked the uh, pressure reducing valve and the check valve and those are fine. So the next step was to check each wheel. So we capped off each the supply going to each wheel for actuating the brakes and this right center wheel um, that was the problem since we capped that off the alarm quit going off when we'd hit the brakes so what happens is it's it's a bunch of discs there's 11 discs in there they're kind of like a transmission disc uh, you'll see this later in the video and when those get all wore out then the, the piston travels too far and then oil leaks be, be through the piston so today we're going to pull off this wheel uh, we're going to pull the planty apart pull all that out and then we're going to pull the brakes apart and we'll see what we have in there and then we'll reseal the piston, put new uh, discs and uh, plates in there if the plates are bad, and uh, get this thing running again. So hang on. The fuck machine set the side that we're working on is the high side. And there's two reasons for that. You'll see I jacked it up, and I jacked it up pretty high. What that's going to do is it's going to help contain uh, most of the differential oil. That way when we pull the axle shaft out, we're not going to lose all the oil from the diff. Um, also, when we go back together, the way that these wheels go on and the way that the hub goes in, it's gonna make it uh, easier for us to work it in. Because um, once in a while you get one that's broken down on like a hill or in a bad spot, and you have to put it on uphill, and then you have to have two come-alongs, you gotta pull everything together, it makes it a lot harder. So this way everything's gonna kind of slide back in when we do it. So you see I've got the jack under it. Um, he's pulling the nuts off the wheel right now, and then we'll get the wheel hook on there, pull the wheel off, and then we'll get a closer look in there. I'll show you what's in there. All right, so we got the wheel off. Uh, there was a shield on here. He took the shield off. And now what we have to do, we're gonna we'll blow all this dirt out of here first. These are the two lines for the cooling. They break and lubricate the cooling discs, or the brake discs. Um, we gotta loosen these, take these clamps. Uh, we'll take this bolt out, we'll loosen these two, loosen this one. And when this half's off, the split clamp's off, we can pry this, hook, this tube back a little bit. And we slide a lollipop in there. Um, it's not a new invention, but interestingly i have the cat set it doesn't have a set that fits in here so we just got some galvanized uh you know tin plating from lowe's or whatever we'll slide that in here and then we'll clamp these back shut and what that'll do that'll stop all this oil from draining out of the tank because if you open one of these up it'll start leaking and it won't stop until that tank's empty so we'll do that to both of these cooling tubes and then we have to go and pull we'll pull the cover off the planetary we'll pull the axle out we'll pull the planetary off and then we'll get the crane on the hub and we'll un unbolt the hub, we'll swing it out, and then we can remove this plate, and then we'll be able to get to the discs and the, the brake discs and uh, plates that are in there. All right, so we got the, we blew all this off, kind of scraped all as much dirt off as we could, and now we've just cracked the cover open, and we're catching some of the oil. You see there's not a whole lot of oil there in the bucket yet, uh, because the way we have it lifted up on this side, um, we will get more when we pull the axle shaft out and there's, there's gonna be about a gallon or half a gallon hidden in the planetary but we'll try to catch as much as we can to uh, maybe reuse if we have to um, I guess that bucket's kind of dirty I guess we'll use new oil but uh, we don't want to get it on the ground anyways so next we'll slide the axle shaft out and then we'll pull the planetary off Wipe that oil off for you. And then just lay it across that wheel, next to the wheel hook.
All right, so now we'll pull these bolts off here. Uh, they take a 15, 16 socket, get all those bolts out. We'll get the crane on here. We'll hook up to the planet here and we'll slide it out of here. All right, so we got to pull these these 12 point bolts out. Was there eight of them? And once we pull this retainer off, then this hub's going to want to come off. So we'll pull them all out, but one. Then we'll get the crane on here to hold this, and then we'll be able to remove this whole hub. Okay, so he's removed the retainer, and you'll see there's a stack of shims in there. That's how we set the clearance on the wheel bearings. Uh, these have a tapered roller bearing in them. So now as we go to slide this off, we're going to get a gush of oil out of here, and that's going to be the oil that's the cooling oil for the brakes. And we'll be able to slide this off. This uh, hub and this, yeah, this is a hub as well. That's a hub. That's a hub. Um, it's a spindle. What this hub's going to slide off with this bull gear. Um, we're just going to leave it all together and sitting in here. Sometimes we pull that off first, but we're just going to pull it one piece. Ah, that stupid safety stand was in the way. I really don't need that safety stand because if this jack were to slip, that thing would only fall about a foot at the most because it's tied together with the rear suspension. But we still put it in there just so it looks good for the uh, bosses here when they come around. Let that drain for a second. So here's a lifetime seal. These stupid things are about $1,800 from Cat now for this lifetime seal. I was hoping it was going to still be in good shape, but it's you can tell it's pretty wore out. sharp too. They get really sharp. It's got metal and metal right here. It rides on, on this half of the seal. This is the one that came off of the hub. So they'll ride together the whole time. Uh, but we're going to replace that. I've got a new set for it. Uh, once you move that other pan and it will just hang it over there and let it hang over there for a while. Alright, so now that we have it off, uh, we'll pull this We'll pull this hub out of here so we can inspect the wheel bearings. And then, uh, so this, here's the brakes here. You can see this, look at all this crap right here. See this crap? That's all brake material. Um, so yeah, we, we got this right. It was just uh, a failure in these brake discs. So we'll have to pull this uh, plate off here and we'll unstack all that and we'll see what's going on. Um, here's the inner lifetime seal. So this lifetime seal here, the smaller one, it keeps the 90 weight in, in the, uh, in the differential section in the wheel and the planetary and it keeps the keeps it from going into the into the uh hydraulic oil which is in which is in this section here so this sits right here and everything on the inside of this is gear oil and everything on the outside of it is going to be um hydraulic oil in fact look at this brake right here you can see this piece coming off right here that's part of the buffer actually right there um on the inner plate the inner and outer plate of a rubber buffer and that's what that is so we'll get all this apart and we'll see what we have. All right, so here's the inner race. Uh, it looks really good. I actually was in here doing some work on this because I had a complete failure on this uh, wheel before and I actually had to buy the whole complete wheel assembly. Um, I'm surprised that the brakes have gone out since then because that was only about 4,000 hours ago. Uh, the inner race and outer race both look good. All right, here's the hub that I pulled out that was sitting in the wheel. And the bearings look really good on there which that's good because these things are not cheap so anytime we get to reuse stuff we definitely do so now we'll go ahead and pull this plate off and we'll get these discs out of here so on this here on this retainer it's heavier than it looks and i've actually one time i pulled one out and it slipped and it crushed my hand in here cut my knuckles bad pretty bad so what we do is i put a bolt in here to kind of hold it up on that bolt and then once you get it popped out and released then you can just grab this and undo that it only weighs like 60 pounds or something like that it's not very heavy but it's just it's heavier than you think and uh, if it pops out of there and surprises you it can hurt all right so first off uh here's part of the problem the discs may not even be wore out but this outer plate's supposed to have a about an eighth of an inch thick of rubber on there um, it's called a buffer and it's the first plate so there's one of those on each end and um yeah, so this disc is no no good. 
we'll pull them out we'll check these discs in fact that is war really bad look at that so we're going to take this apart we're going to get all these discs and plates out uh if the plates are good we can reuse them which is good that'll save me about a, about twelve hundred dollars um actually a little more than eight fifteen hundred dollars something like that whatever um but we're definitely gonna be changing all the discs and and the end plates so let's get this apart and see what we have what's the other side of that look like so this side see the meat that's on there we flip it over and there's nothing so um it should have this and that's even low and see how it's flaking i mean that was just failing on both sides It doesn't matter because um, they're not going back in. But we'll save the plates. We'll check out the plates. Actually, put the plates in a separate pile. And the discs, since we know they're bad, just go ahead and lay them on the tire. They can get dirty. We'll just keep the discs clean or the plates clean. As soon as I get farther in here, I can see more of them. Like this one right here, that's on my thumb. It's it's failing. So we'll get all these out, and I'll just highlight if we see any really bad ones. Other than that, we're going to expect to see them all kind of flaking apart the same way. All right, so this is the last plate on the inside, and you can see it's totally delaminated on the. Here, take that. It's totally delaminated of this uh, rubber thing. So, yeah, I guess uh, there's a part number, eight whiskey ninety seven oh seven. It was made in two thousand six, so that's why it's older than the truck. This truck's a twenty eleven, but I bought this wheel, this whole hub assembly used from a cat dealer um, after it had that major disaster. With, I mean, it just it destroyed everything i lost the planetary they're working at night in a quarry in you know uh in lake elsinore and the, this kid operator under he just ran it and ran and ran until the thing was just i've never seen one that bad everything in here was destroyed i had to just unbolt it right here take this whole section off and throw everything in the trash i didn't get one spare piece out of that one okay so now we've got to pull the piston out because i've got to make sure it didn't get damaged when it was being pushed out too far which all right, so to get the pistons out, um, we have to get that little lock pin out of there. So to do that, you pull on the back, there's four, four plugs in here that take an Allen wrench, and you pull those plugs out. And then what you do is, we put a spacer inside there. They sell a tool for it that you could just run in there, but we don't have that. Um, so we put a spacer in here, a little brass spacer. So as he cranks that in there, it's gonna push the pin out, you see that? And then, of course, the CAD engineers made this thing perfectly well, so you couldn't do it without because we put as thick of a spacer as we could, but they made it so that you couldn't put, you couldn't do it without their tool, of course. But we've got a way to remedy that. We'll get the vice grips on here, and then just kind of pull on that pin, kind of jerk on the pin, and then the other pin will fall out, just like that. And then this pin will push in. Well, that one won't, but here's what it looks like on the back side. So here's the pin, and there's the spring. So we'll get all four of those released, and then we can slide the piston out. All right, so we got all four of those those keepers out and now we just had a get a bar in there just kind of jiggle the piston a little bit get it out so we'll lift it out of there and then we'll see what the seals look like and if there's no damage to the piston and what in the hub then we'll be able to just uh, put new seals on it reinstall it and go back together with this piece of junk oh yeah look at that I put the seal out right there that was so, good all right we'll get that changed and um i'll look in here and i'm sure there's it's gonna be good yeah it looks fine surfaces are real smooth we'll get new seals on here we'll put this thing back together all right so you can see under this nylon seal there's there's like a backup ring and that i'm assuming it's it's like yeah it's like a rubber thing and it puts pressure on this backup ring you know just to keep a tight seal in there um and this is gonna have the same thing so i have new ones of those we'll get those on in just a second here all right so here's what four thousand four hundred dollars for the plates and discs look like i'm um, right here in this box is one of the dampers cut that open i'll show you guys what it what the damper so that's it's supposed to look like all right so there's a side that goes against the the disc the friction disc and this is the rubber side it's like a cork infused rubber kind of stuff and this goes against the piston and then on the other side it goes against that the retainer plate so it'll go like this and then the discs and plates will stack and then there'll be another one on this end sitting like this so we're going to go ahead and get all these stuck in there and then we'll resume this all right so we've got the piston back in we've got the retainer pins all put back together and so for the first disc or yeah for the first plate it's going to get one of these uh ones with the rubber on it so we just got to line this up with the spline and that goes rubber up against the piston 
and then we'll stack disc plate disc plate all the way through there's 11 discs so um, yeah there's a handful to put in here so I'm just I'm not gonna bother video and all that we'll get those in there and then we'll come back to it all right so we've got all the discs and plates in here if you notice this last plate um, has the buffer on it just like the inner one and that's gonna go against this retainer right here so we'll put a new o-ring on this retainer we'll grease it up real good so it doesn't slip out and this is going to push up against that buffer that buffer keeps everything from chattering in there and it just kind of keeps it uh you know everything from jiggling around or whatever in there so he's, he's kind of lining those up right now because those discs actually get a free float in there so we just have to get them lined up and then when we go to put the the main hub back in there the one right there that's hanging from the crane these splines they have a really big bevel on here so it makes it a lot easier to slide it in there and once we get it hanging up there we just have to kind of jiggle it and push it and kind of work it back in now if you guys have seen any of my videos before on rebuilding transmissions um, you'll see these discs are just like the discs that we put in the transmissions um, normally I know like an automotive they soak them in the ETF before they put it together when we do the cat transmissions we just soak them in oil. we just put oil on them we, we just you know pour oil on them as we put them in I didn't bother doing that here for one thing there's a lot of dust in here i don't want to just stick to them i kind of don't have the way to do it right here very easily and um you know because they're not laying flat they're vertical and then also the thing about this is when we put this wheel back together and we pull those uh those lollipop blocking plates out of here this thing's going to fill up with oil and it's going to fill all the way up and as soon as we put the bed back down the way these work when the bed goes down um the oil that comes out of these rams goes through these brakes to cool them it's always got oil flowing through them but then when you put the ram down, it gets even a bigger gulp of oil and that oil is going to flow through here and this thing's going to be so full of oil and flush dinner by the time this bed goes down and today's friday so they're not going to be working i don't think they're working saturday they might but even if they do it's going to sit overnight in oil they're going to be soaked it's going to be fine so we're going to go ahead and get that plate on there and then we'll start assembling the uh the hub and uh the planet area and stuff all right, so here's the, this is the outer lifetime seal, the outer wheel seal. Uh, it's also called a dual cone seal. Uh, this is an aftermarket one. The cat ones are like, I, I think they're like about $2,000 now, and it's just an outrageous price. Um, I've tried a lot of aftermarket ones, and a lot of them suck. This one's good. This one's really good. So on the older trucks, like the older 735s, the older like AFX, was it AFX serial number or whatever, AFN, whatever it was, the older 740s, they didn't have this part as being replaceable. This is where this rubber sits into, uh, and it's got the metal ring in there. But the newer trucks have this as being replaceable. Um, if they're not bad, I don't replace them, but this one had cat seals in there, and I tried putting aftermarket dual cones in just the old ones that were in here, and they don't seal right, they don't fit right. So I already pulled the old one out, so we're gonna put the new one in to that retainer plate that holds the discs on. So this O-ring is gonna go on the outside of it, and then we have to kind of press it in. It's, it's kind of hard to get in, it's not real easy, um, but it's doable out in the field. Uh, it'd be a heck of a lot easier in the shop with a press or something. And then the other one's gonna go on the wheel hub. Uh, the part that's hanging there from the crane that'll be even harder so we'll get that on the back of the truck we'll have to get the old one out and then get the new one in without tweaking it that's the hard part uh because it's it, it's kind of a pain to get in i'm not even going to video it because it's just too much work getting it in um i don't want it's it's gonna be hard to can't to film it while i do it so i'm gonna get this these parts in we'll get the lifetime seals on and then we'll get this thing going all right now that all the discs are in and the plates are in we're going to put the retainer on and when you put the retainer on you have to put it, it only goes on one way because it's missing one hole here so he's got it stabbed with a lineup bar all right just get the, that in there and just kind of kick it straight and you pop it in there and put the bolts in and then that that's it on that then next we can put in the lifetime seals all right, okay so we've got the dual cone seals installed already we got the inner one and the outer one installed on the on the wheel and the wheel hub whatever that is and then on the brake unit we have the inner one and the outer one installed um, took us a little while these things sometimes they go you're real easy sometimes you got to fight the crap out of them so but we've got this one done now so he's just cleaning out the inside of that and then we'll take this um, this hub here set it inside the wheel and then we'll be able to mount it all under the brakes the spindle and the brake assembly and then we can uh once we get that slid in there we don't have to set the shims because we didn't change the bearing so we're just gonna put the sh same shim pack in and once we do that then we just throw the planetary and the cover on and then we can put the wheel back on and fill it up with oil and we'll be all done
we've got most of, most of the uh, spline in there. And we switch over to here, and we've got to get this spline here on this hub, and then we'll just work the both, both of them in the rest of the way together. up against the seals we're just fighting the seals so we'll put this retainer in and then that's gonna pull the wheel to get pull the wheel all the way up to the shams where it belongs We have it all tight as far as that goes. So I'll take the crane off and I'll make sure that the wheel rotates just to make sure that it's binding in there. And if it does, if it rotates, I know we're all good because we didn't change anything where we have to adjust the shims. So we'll put the rest of the bolts in, torque them down, and then we can assemble the planetary. All right, we just took the crane off, so I just stick a bar in here and rotate it freely. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish tightening those up and put the planetary in. All right, so we've got that tightened up, we got this all ready to go. Put a new seal on the planetary, and we put these lineup studs on here so it makes it easier to get the planetary lined up on there. We just set it up with two holes on there, and then you can just, you know, kind of drop down on the studs and slide right in. Okay, so we've got it on the studs, and it's just going to swing the hook out of the way, and this thing will just slide right on. gears lined up with that ring gear all right so it's got all three gears lined up the seals good and we just close it right up we'll put those bolts in and tighten it up and then next we'll put the axle shaft in and, and we'll be done All right, so we're getting the shaft in. This is the side that has two splines on it because of the diff lock. So it gets to be a little bit harder to put in than the other side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give uh, Alex the camera and I'll show you guys how I do this. So you get it, once you get into that second spline, then you don't want to go all the way in with it. You want to get the gear on here. And then you just have to line the gear up. You have to look inside here. Look at the top two gears that I'm trying to mesh with. I get them to where if I lift up a little bit, it's going to go in just like that. I just lift it up and then I got it into the third one. And just take the bar, just tap it. And then you got to expose it so you can put that ring in here ring on and just push it right in and then the, the cover actually has a space like a, a projection and a you know, like a, a wear part that's in it that holds that shaft in place so we just got to wipe this down we'll put the cover on and then we'll top it off all right so we've got it all together alex started it up and we're just going to build brake pressure and then we're going to hit the brakes and just see if we cured a problem which we know we did because we saw that piston seal pooched out but just to make sure we don't have any leaks and stuff before we put the wheel on. So right now, by, by this time, this thing's already full of uh, hydraulic oil. And if it's going to leak, it's going to leak right out of the bottom here. And there is a chance you can have a slight leak at first. 
um, just until you run it and they just kind of have to see it a little bit but um, looks like this one's doing good it's not leaking at all so far on with a half inch gun with a long extension makes it easier just to get them all in place and then we go around and we hit each one with the one inch gun about four hits and, uh, that's it we'll lower down with the jack and then this thing's done so anyway thank you for watching um if you haven't subscribed already please do uh please hit the like button that really helps a lot with uh you know the algorithm thing and uh if you have anybody that's interested in these kind of videos please share it um that will get my uh, sub count up and as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.